In this video, I want to do another mixing problem just because I think these problems can be confusing to set up, but they're really pretty simple. So I'm going to do one more example of that. So for this problem, let's say that we have a container and it's full of water, that's full of water, and the water, I'm just going to put H2O for water, the mass of the water is 50 grams. So I'll actually read the problem and then I'll start putting stuff on the board. So we have a 70 gram piece of copper metal at 54 degrees Celsius that's placed in 50 grams of water at 26 degrees Celsius. If the final temperature of the water and the metal is 29.2 degrees Celsius, what is the specific heat in joules per gram degrees Celsius of the copper? So this problem is a little bit different from the other one we did because the other one we did we had two materials that we put together, or actually we were mixing together two, two things of water at different temperatures and calculating the final temperature once the, the water reached equilibrium. In this case, we have, we're given the final temperature and we want to calculate the specific heat of one of the materials of the, see, of the copper. Okay, so we have H2O and the, the mass of the water, so this is water. So I have the mass, and I'm using M for mass, and then I just put W on the, on the M to indicate that this is the mass of the water. You can use any symbol you want here, but use ones that are, that are easy to discern what your material is. So this is equal to 50 grams. The initial temperature of the water, so I have the temperature I for initial and then of the water, is equal to 26 degrees Celsius. And the final temperature of the water is equal to 29.2 degrees Celsius. And what we're doing, so we have the water, we're putting a piece of copper in here, so this is copper, so higher temperature than the water, and we're cooling off the copper in the water. So the mass that's given for the copper, and so I'm once again I have the mass and then I just have the C to indicate that this is copper. So this is equal to 70 grams. The initial temperature of the copper is equal to 54 degrees Celsius. And then the final temperature is 29.2 degrees Celsius. and th So notice that the final temperature is the same for both the water and the copper. That makes sense because we've all experienced this. If you put a cup of water on the counter, it's going to lose, if, say it's a hot, hot cup of tea, it's going to lose heat until it's the same temperature as the room. If it were a different temperature from the room temperature, it would be changing. So th this will change temperature until, so the copper will change temperature until, and the water will change temperature until they're the same temperature. And in this case, since the copper is cooling off, it's losing heat, so I'm going to say that, I'm just going to write the Q, so the, the heat from the copper is going into the water. And then we know that from previous problems, if we assume that this is a perfectly insulated container, and this is an important distinction because if we're losing heat from the container, then we can't say that the, the Q, well the Q into the water is still the same, but the temperature might be changing from losing heat from the water as well. So we're just simplifying this by saying, okay, well, all of the heat lost from the copper is equal to the heat gained by the water. So we can write this as Q of the water is equal to negative Q of the copper. And Q, the, the heat lost from the copper is has a negative sign because it's losing heat. Remember, if it's losing heat, it's negative. If it's gaining heat, it's positive. So now we can say, so now we need the heat equation where this, these are not changing phase, they're just changing temperature. 
and this is still a liquid, this is still a solid. So we just want the equation Q, the heat equation, Q is equal to M cat. And then we can write this equation for each of these. So the heat gained by the water is equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature of the water. And then the Q of the copper is equal to, and remember this is negative, so the mass of the copper multiplied by the specific heat of the copper multiplied by the temperature final minus temperature initial of the copper. And then I'm going to multiply this negative sign through. And what all that's going to do is change the sign on these temperatures. So I have the heat lost from the copper is equal to the mass of the copper multiplied by the specific heat of the copper multiplied by the initial temperature of the copper minus the final temperature of the copper. What I want to do is just put these directly into this equation, except I've already counted, well, I'll leave that there. Um, so I'm, I'm just going to put these directly into this equation. I've already accounted for the negative sign, so really I'm just going to set these two equal. So I have the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature of the water. This is equal to the mass of the copper multiplied by the specific heat of the copper multiplied by the initial temperature of the water minus the final temperature of the water. Okay, so now looking at this equation, let's look at what we already have and what we need to find. So what the problem wants us to find is the specific heat of the copper. That's right here. So we, ha we know the mass of the water, we know the specific heat of the water, we know the final temperatures, we know the initial temperature of the water, we know the mass of the copper, and we know the initial temperature of the copper. So we should be able to solve this equation for the specific heat of the copper. So this, and to solve, this equation is pretty easy to solve comparatively to the, to the, to the example where we had to solve for the temperature final. That, took a few more steps. This one, all we need to do is divide over the mass of the copper and then this delta T right here. So I'm just going to say the specific heat of the copper is equal to the mass of the water multiplied by the specific heat of the water multiplied by the final temperature minus the initial temperature divided by the mass of the copper multiplied by the temperature initial of the copper multiplied by the final temperature. Okay, so now all we need to do is put values into this equation and we can solve for the specific heat of the copper. So this is equal to the mass of the water is 50 grams. The specific heat of the water is 4.184 joules per gram degrees Celsius. The final temperature is 29.2 degrees Celsius minus, and then the temperature, the initial temper temperature is 26 degrees Celsius. This is divided by the mass of the copper is 70 grams, and the, the initial temperature of the copper is, whoops, 54 degrees Celsius minus the final temperature is 29.2 degrees Celsius. Okay, let's look at units real quick. First of all, the grams here are going to cancel, and the Celsius is going to cancel on these temperatures. So we're left with joules per gram degrees Celsius. Since we're solving for the specific heat, that's the units that we want, because that's the units of specific heat. So that's a pretty good indicator that we did this correctly. If you ended up with the wrong units, you, you did something in the math wrong, and so you need to go back and check it. So if we plug all of these numbers into our calculator, we get 0 0.386 joules per gram degrees Celsius. 
in summary with these with these mixing problems where this one we're not really mixing um, like the previous one we mixed water and water this one where we have a solid in a liquid and we're losing heat so if you have something where you have heat exchange between two substances all you need to do is say okay well the heat lost from one is equal to the heat gained by the other and then use Q is equal to MCAT write out your equations for Q is equal to MCAT set them set the two Q's equal and then solve for whatever it is you're looking for in this equation so in this case we were looking for the specific heat of the copper so we solve for that but if we had been looking for the final temperature of these we would have solved this equation for this final temperature. So that's how you do these problems. I hope this was helpful. Thanks for watching.